Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Brennan. I am the Assistant to the President for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism. And I want to thank you all for coming here today. And on behalf of the President, I am delighted to welcome you to this special event. It is wonderful to have members of the Diplomatic Corps, partners from industry and academia, colleagues from the U.S. government, as well as those of you who are joining online participating in today's event. It is a testament to the growing importance and growing recognition of cyber issues that you are here today. And this is a special day for us, too. We've never assembled this many senior leaders from across the government to discuss a document about cyberspace. So thank you, everyone, for joining us as we start this new chapter in our international cyber policy. First, I'd like to remind all of you that last week we sent over the first ever cybersecurity legislative proposal from any administration in the history to Congress. That proposed legislation is focused on improving cybersecurity for the American people, our nation's critical infrastructure, and the federal government's own networks and computers. And our proposal strikes a critical balance between strengthening security, preserving privacy and civil liberties protections, and fostering continued economic growth. The administration is eager to work with Congress to enact a cybersecurity bill, and we look forward to the broader discussion that Congress will hold with industry, privacy advocates, and the wider community. And today, we're here to mark the release of the U.S. International Strategy for Cyberspace, which is the first major policy document issued by this government that articulates U.S. views and policy pursuits regarding the international cyberspace domain. It is important to note that this is first and foremost a policy document, not a technical one. And believe me, if this was a technical document, I'd be the last person introducing this document to the community. But it is a policy document, and that's part of what sets the international strategy apart. Lots of us have been in government longer than the internet has been around. And this strategy makes a clear case as to why those of us who are involved with international, national, and homeland security policies, as well as with the future of the global economy and human rights and freedom, must pay attention to cyber issues and be actively engaged in cyber policy formulation. This document also provides a broader context for cyberspace discussions so that cyberspace policies and activities can be understood within a more comprehensive policy framework, something that's often lost. It should come as no surprise that in this networked world, these policy areas are very much interconnected. But for a government to recognize in one document its cyber cyberspace imperatives, to recognize that those needs are grounded in our changing societies and economies, and that we owe all these changes to technology and governance regimes that reward innovation and transparency, that's new and that's important. This document states what our policies are, but just as importantly, it demonstrates how they fit together. That's part of the reason why I'm joined by so many people on this stage. This is a strategy that goes beyond any single department or agency. It is not an implementation plan for a particular program or a particular part of government. It is about the principles that unite our nation, the vision that unites our policy, and the priorities that unite our government. So what are those goals? They can be boiled down to the following. We seek a cyberspace that is open to new innovations, interoperable the world over, sufficiently secure to support people's work, and reliable enough to earn their trust. Those four qualities are at the core of what makes the internet what it is and what it will take to make sure that it endures. Much of what is in this strategy shouldn't surprise you. That's because so much of this was developed with you. It's the culmination of years of conversation with other nations, with industry, and with experts. To our international guests, the President's message here is clear. If you seek an internet that has all the same benefits of today and fewer risks, you have a partner in the United States. If you want to see a world where more countries have access to these technologies and where people can use them without compromising their safety, their privacy, or their rights of free expression, you have a partner in the United States. And if you want to see a world in which states act as responsible stakeholders in cyberspace to help uphold international peace and security, you have a partner in the United States. And not just in the United States, but in scores of other nations that see a future where we are better connected, more safely connector, connected, and free of because of it. These aren't American values. 
They are values that have come to define the Internet itself. Today, you'll hear from leaders from across the executive branch. I'm joined here by my colleagues, Secretary Clinton, Attorney General Holder, Secretary Locke, Secretary Napolitano, Deputy Secretary Lin, and White House Cybersecurity Coordinator Schmidt. You see how each of these very diverse agencies took part in the efforts this strategy recognizes and how they're beginning to plan for its implementation. That work is ongoing, but within 180 days, our administration is committed to assess progress across each relevant agency to see how well we are realizing the President's vision. The first step is the strategy, which is what we are unveiling today. The next steps are up to all of us. Before I leave, I want to acknowledge the leadership of everyone on this stage, of the, gov of the government officials in the audience, and especially the dedicated members of the National Security staff who saw this document to completion. Many thanks on behalf of the President and on behalf of a grateful nation. By itself, the Internet will not usher in a new era of international cooperation. That work is up to us. Together, we can work together to create a future for cyberspace that builds prosperity, enhances security, and safeguards openness in our networked world. This is the future we seek, and we invite all nations and peoples to join us in that effort. And it is now my privilege to turn the podium over to Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. Well, thank you very much. Um, as you can uh, guess from uh, John's introductory remarks, we are very pleased this day has come. Uh, we are delighted at the extraordinary uh, work that has been done across our government uh, with the unveiling of this uh, international strategy for cyberspace. And we look forward to partnering uh, with our private sector, um, with other nations, and with others who share the goal that is set forth uh, in this uh, new uh, document uh, that uh, really tries to achieve the goal that is set forth uh, in the very beginning, uh, and that is the United States will work internationally to promote an open, interoperable, secure, and reliable information and communications infrastructure that supports international trade and commerce, strengthens international security, and fosters free expression and innovation. To achieve that goal, we will build and sustain an environment in which norms of responsible behavior guide states' actions, sustain partnerships, and support the rule of law in cyberspace. This is a policy that very much sums up what the United States seeks. Uh, many of you representing um, the governments of other countries as well as the private sector or foundations or civil society groups share our commitment to ensuring that the Internet remains open, secure, and free. Not only for the two billion people who are now online, but for the billions more who will be online in the years ahead. What they are able to do in cyberspace, whether they can exchange ideas and opinions openly, freely explore the subjects of their choosing, stay safe from cyber criminals, and engage in professional and personal activities online, confident that doing so will remain private and secure, depends a great deal on the policies that we will adopt together. Now, many of you know that the State Department has staked out a position as a leader on Internet freedom, and I see Alec Ross, who has headed our efforts uh, on that. This is one critical aspect of cyber policy, but we know very well that the numbers of issues seem to be infinitely expanding, and we need to develop, deploy, and coordinate policies that address the full array of cyber issues. That is what the U.S. International Strategy for Cyberspace is intended to help us do, because it does, as John said, bring together for the first time under one framework all the different policies that the United States is pursuing into an integrated whole-of-government approach. It also articulates for the first time all of the principles that guide our work, those that infuse our foreign policy, such as upholding the fundamental freedoms that we consider 
uh, internet freedom to be part of, uh, and all the other aspects of this policy that will be addressed by my colleagues. We try to uh, really tackle all of the difficult issues and challenges that cyberspace uh, presents. And we know very well that uh, everything we've written today, we will have to keep updating as new challenges and opportunities arise. Because while the internet offers new ways for people to exercise their political rights, it also, as we have seen very clearly in the last months, gives governments new tools for clamping down on dissent. And while the internet creates new economic opportunities for people at every point on the development spectrum, it also gives criminals new openings to steal personal data and intellectual property. And while the internet makes it possible for governments and people to collaborate more closely across borders, it presents new terrain for conflict when states or other actors deliberately disrupt networks or when terrorists use the internet to organize attacks. So we seek to maximize the internet's tremendous capacity to accelerate human progress while sharpening our response and our tools to deal with the threats and the problems and the disputes that are part of cyberspace. Now, as we look at this strategy, I want to be clear about what it is not. It is not a series of prescriptions, and that's an important distinction, because as we work to achieve a cyberspace that is open, interoperable, secure, and reliable, there is no one-size-fits-all, straightforward route to that goal. We have to build a global consensus around a shared vision for the future of cyberspace to make sure it serves rather than impedes the social, economic, and political aspirations of people worldwide. And that can only happen through patient, persistent, and creative diplomacy. So the strategy identifies seven key policy priorities that will be the focus of our diplomatic outreach going forward. They are first, economic engagement to encourage innovation and trade while safeguarding intellectual property. Uh, second, cybersecurity to protect our networks and strengthen international security. Third, law enforcement to improve our ability to respond to cybercrime, including by strengthening international laws and regulations where appropriate. Next, military cooperation to help our alliances do more together to confront cyber threats while ensuring that our military's networks remain protected. Next, multi-stakeholder internet governance so that networks work the way they should. And then development to support the rise of new partners by helping countries develop their digital infrastructure and build their capacity to withstand cyber threats. And finally, but for us very importantly, internet freedom. We want to do more together to protect privacy and secure fundamental freedoms of expression, assembly, and association online as we do offline. Together, these seven priorities comprise a new foreign policy imperative for which the State Department has been exercising and will continue to have a leading role. Now, what we are trying to do in furtherance of uh, those uh, imperatives is to integrate cyber issues into our programs across the board, from our cooperation with other nations to stop criminal cartels to our economic diplomacy to our support for girls and women worldwide. We've created our 21st century statecraft agenda to harness new technologies to achieve our diplomatic and development goals. And we want to continue to press forward on this with the partners that we see here before us. We are sponsoring capacity building efforts around the world to help more countries play a bigger role in uh, the internet. And as our focus on internet freedom clearly uh, describes, we are supporting the efforts of human rights and democracy activists to ensure that they have access to an open internet. We are funding cutting edge programs to give them the tools and the know-how to communicate effectively and safely to get their message out, even as governments try to silence them or cut them off from the internet. To coordinate these and other efforts, we've created the new office of the coordinator for cyber issues. Chris Painter, a longtime expert in the field, is now on the job at the State Department, having 
joined us from uh, the White House and the NSC, where he helped lead the development of the strategy we're releasing today. Uh, Chris's office is taking the lead at the State Department as we work with other nations and partners to promote these broad goals. Now, we're entering a, a next phase in our engagement with cyberspace based on this strategy. Uh, and we're seeing how countries are adjusting their own policies and approaches. And we're understanding that we can't have disparate uh, stoved piped discussions. Uh, because as many countries have begun to focus more on internet policies and as more citizens have gone online, too often the international discussions we have about cyber issues uh, deals with each of these challenges separately. Our diplomats meet with their counterparts on cyber crime, and then on another occasion on internet freedom, and then finally on a third on network security. We are not dealing with these issues internationally in a coordinated, <coughs> integrated fashion. And so now we will, based on our strategy. And our hope is that you will actually read this strategy, uh, that you will engage with us on it, that you will look at, understand our principles and our approach, and then join us in helping to put them into practice. Uh, we're seeing cyberspace transform before our very eyes. Now we have to shape that transformation. And we are excited uh, that this strategy is going to give us the roadmap that we will follow going forward. And I look forward to working with you in the months ahead to translate this strategy into action. And it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Attorney General Eric Holder. Good afternoon. And thank you, Secretary Clinton. It is a privilege to join with you and so many of our other government and business leaders, uh, security experts, civil rights advocates, and international allies as we announce uh, a new strategy aimed at engaging our global partners in maintaining the security and the vibrancy of cyberspace. I want to join John Brennan, who I think is doing a great job in uh, leading the administration's work on this issue, in thanking you all for uh, being here today and for your support and for your participation in developing the historic strategy that we have gathered here today uh, to discuss. Now, although we may approach the issue of cyber threats from different perspectives, we are really united by common goals, security, opportunity, openness, and prosperity. We're also bound by our shared values and by our collective concerns. The 21st century threats that we now face to both our national and economic security really have no precedent, and they know no borders. And they demand not only our constant attention, but also a comprehensive, collaborative, and well-coordinated response. In this new age of seamless global commerce and instant communication, we all stand to benefit, but only if the information technology being used to drive social, economic, and political progress is in fact secure. Unfortunately, for every technological or commercial quantum leap that we have made, criminals and often entire international criminal syndicates have kept pace. Threats of thefts of information that would have been impossible in an ink and paper world can now be carried out nearly undetected from almost anywhere. Today in communities worldwide, cyber crime threatens the security of our citizens as well as the integrity of our markets, discouraging investment and stifling innovation, and all too often devastating businesses and individual lives. If we are to meet the goals and responsibilities that we share, protecting public safety and personal privacy, fostering innovation and creativity, and stimulating economic growth, we need a new cutting edge framework for preventing and for combating cyber crime. Now one that's nimble enough to fight complex, constantly evolving threats, but also strong enough to ensure that essential freedoms are upheld. That's precisely why the new international strategy for cyberspace is so important. Today, with the unveiling of this strategy, we are signaling that nearly a decade since the approval of the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, a new era of global collaboration, engagement, and vigilance has begun. Just last month, I had the opportunity to travel to Budapest where I spoke at an event commemorating 
the convention. Ten years ago, the United States was among the first nations to support this landmark agreement, which provided a path for allies across the world to address cyber threats and criminal activities while also safeguarding civil rights. Now, this agreement and the international working groups and joint initiatives that followed it have been effective in breaking down barriers to transnational cooperation and communication. And today, we're working with our international partners to advance investigations and prosecutions like never before. Not only do we have agents and attorneys in place around the globe where they work alongside local law enforcement teams, we're also able to respond to potential threats more quickly and effectively than ever. And the results of such collaboration uh, are clear. In recent months, the Justice Department has announced takedowns of significant criminal groups operating from Romania, Egypt, and elsewhere that had been victimizing American businesses and citizens, including children. We've also brought multiple criminal conspirators to justice for their roles in coordinated cyber crimes that, according to court documents, netted nearly $1.5 million from U.S. victims. And just a few weeks ago, we announced an operation to disable an international criminal network that had infected more than two million computers worldwide with malicious software. Until we stepped in with the help of industry and security experts, as well as key international partners, this malware was allowing criminals to capture bank account numbers, usernames, and other sensitive uh, financial information online. Now, while we can all be encouraged by these and by other successes, we cannot become complacent. As President Obama has repeatedly indicated, we must and we will take our global fight against cyber threats to the next level. The strategy that we are announcing today is an affirmation of that promise. It reinforces our nation's support for the Budapest Convention and for efforts to establish the rule of law in cyberspace. It also reflects our ongoing commitment to prevent terrorists and other criminals from exploiting the internet for operational planning or financing or for the execution of attacks. Now, I have every confidence that this new strategy will allow us to build on the record of progress that has been achieved in recent years in preventing and combating cyber crimes and in more effectively ensuring that the internet will continue to provide a forum for open discourse, a marketplace for uh, commercial innovation, and a safe environment for our children to communicate and to learn. But to get where we need to be, we must bring even more government and industry partners into this work. No single agency, no single company, no single community or country has access to all of the facts necessary to fully assess the nature of the threats that we face or to adequately address them. Only by working together can we truly understand current problems and, problems and confronting emerging challenges. And only by joining forces can we effectively fight back. Now, in this fight, I'm proud to stand with you. I'm grateful to count you as partners, and I look forward to what we will accomplish together in the critical days ahead. And now I'm pleased to turn things over to a, a key leader in this work, my colleague and my friend, Secretary Gary Lott. Well, thank you very much, Attorney General Holder. It's really uh, great to be here with all of you. The events of the past year, and especially the last few months in the Middle East, have shown us again how information technology is transforming the world. The rapidly evolving digital landscapes, landscape affects us all individually and in a very, very personal way. Given these dramatic changes, I'm proud to take part in this announcement of the nation's first ever all-encompassing international strategy for cyberspace. This is truly a monumental effort, a comprehensive strategy in which the United States government is integrating into one single comprehensive statement our vision for the future of cyberspace. Industry analysts estimate that the internet is responsible for $10 trillion in annual online transactions and growing every day. Today, nearly every transaction you can think of is being done online. Consumers paying their utility, phone, uh, utility bills from their smartphones, 
people downloading uh, movies, music, and books online, companies from the smallest local store to a bed and breakfast in, in a remote rural area, to the largest multinational corporation ordering goods, paying vendors, and selling to customers via the internet. To continue to fuel these and future innovations, we policymakers have a responsibility to do what we can to promote trust in this still relatively new medium. That's what should underpin everything we do regarding cyberspace, trust. People need trust that their identity and their personal information will be secure online. Businesses want to have that trust that their intellectual property won't be stolen. And government agencies and our military need that trust that our trade, technology, and military secrets are safe from our adversaries. And let's be candid. Because so much of cyberspace was initially designed for convenience rather than operational integrity as a top priority, we oftentimes are fighting an uphill battle. To preserve and even improve our people's confidence in cyberspace, we need an environment that not only rewards innovation and empowers entrepreneurs, but one that also constantly improves upon the integrity of the interactions that take place online. And as the strategy points out, cyberspace should safeguard fundamental freedoms and enhance personal privacy. It should be open to innovation, be interoperable the world over, and facilitate novel ways of conducting trade. And cyberspace should be secure enough to earn people's trust and reliable enough to support people's work. Furthermore, deliberations on cyberspace policy must not be limited to governments, but must include appropriate stakeholders. The Commerce Department is pleased to play an important role in making real the strategy that we're discussing and announcing today. To ensure that cyberspace continues to serve the needs of our companies and innovators, the Department of Commerce will work with our colleagues to sustain a free trade environment, to encourage technological innovation on accessible, globally linked networks, to protect intellectual property, including commercial trade secrets, from theft, and to ensure that technical standards are made robust as determined by technical experts, not mercantilists. All of these efforts, current and ongoing, are aimed at shoring up and improving upon people's trust in cyberspace. Now, as you know, I've been nominated by President Obama to serve as the nation's next ambassador to China. And this is a very humbling assignment, but also a challenge I'm looking forward to. And should I be confirmed by the Senate, I look forward to working with Secretary Clinton and my other colleagues to advance these goals and the broader set of cyberspace issues with our Chinese counterparts. Because as the strategy makes clear, the effort to build trust in the cyberspace realm is one that must be pushed beyond in capitals all around the world. Thank you very much. And now it's my uh, pleasure to turn the podium over to a longtime friend and dear colleague, Secretary Napolitano. Well, thank you, Gary. And let me add my words to those who've come before uh, and uh, say that this strategy uh, present, pr presents a blueprint for building an international framework for making cyberspace secure and reliable. As we know, cyberspace is a relatively new form for human interaction, but it has quickly become vital to our way of life. The Department of Homeland Security has the lead for the federal government in three major areas. One, to secure federal executive branch computer systems. Two, to work with industry to defend privately owned and operated critical infrastructure. And three, to work with state, local, tribal, and territorial governments to secure their information systems. Without a secure cyberspace, critical infrastructure like power and water stop functioning and basic necessities don't make it onto store shelves. Our economies, our healthcare systems, and our transportation networks all depend on secure and resilient cyber networks. That's why at DHS, we see cybersecurity as part and parcel of a secure and resilient homeland, 
and something that can't be treated as separate and distinct from our other missions. Indeed, it's why we've identified securing cyberspace as one of our five core missions and one of our priority areas of focus. The U.S. international strategy for cyberspace will foster deeper, more effective collaboration among international partners, government, non-government, and private sector entities, as well as individuals, families, and communities. All of these play a role in creating a more secure cyberspace. Specifically, the strategy calls for assisting international partners with capacity building. This is an area where DHS can help, particularly when it comes to developing computer emergency response and readiness teams, the so-called CERTs. DHS has a particular strength in facilitating open, secure, and reliable networks. We're therefore glad that the strategy calls for developing and regularly sharing international cybersecurity best practices, an area where we all have significant capabilities. The strategy also will benefit many of our existing efforts to promote a reliable and secure cyberspace through greater partnerships and collaboration, increased awareness, and stronger action among government, the private sector, civil society, and individuals alike. I'd also want to note that the strategy calls for us to work closely with infrastructure owners and operators. The private sector controls a significant majority of network functionality, and already at DHS we're working with private sector partners to build a more secure cyber ecosystem for all users. Uh, therefore, this strategy provides us and helps us push forward a solid basis upon which to build. For us, cybersecurity, like other security challenges, is a shared responsibility. And the government, private sector, the public, and other key stakeholders all have important roles to play. DHS has been involved from the outset. We feel strongly about our ability to support its implementation, and we look forward to working with all of our partners in the weeks and months ahead to make this vision a reality. We understand the importance of this work. A secure and reliable cyberspace is not only critical to our shared security, but to our shared prosperity as well. Thank you, and now I would like to recognize and bring to the podium Deputy Secretary Bill Lynn. Thank you, Secretary Napolitano. As the President's strategy makes clear, the challenges we face in cyberspace are not amenable to narrow solutions. No single agency can tackle the required issues. No one nation can devise or enforce a sustainable solution. And the challenges extend even beyond what governments can achieve alone. The private sector, both here and around the world, must be part of a solution. The international cyber strategy laid out by President Obama recognizes this complexity and the broad approach we must pursue to realize the revolutionary benefits of network technology. It is hard to overstate the importance of cyberspace to the Department of Defense or the need to engage our allies and partners to keep it secure. Along with the advantages of conferred by cyberspace, comes the threat of potentially crippling cyber attacks. Department of Defense networks are probed millions of times a day, and more than 100 foreign intelligence agencies have tried to penetrate our networks or those of our industrial partners. Cyber threats are growing more serious and more prevalent. Our military continues to ensure that we can operate with secure and reliable networks and maintain the capability to defend vital national assets. The military's role in keeping our networks secure will be further detailed in our department's forthcoming strategy for operating in cyberspace. But our role in furthering international cooperation is already clear. A bedrock principle of this administration and this president is to usher in a new era of engagement with the world based on mutual interests and mutual respect. The department does not face cyber threats alone. Individuals, the private sector, and other nations all face dangers in cyberspace. And as this strategy makes clear, 
we are all better off acting together to meet these threats. Indeed, there is a strong logic to collective cyber defense. Sharing malware signatures and how they are used to perpetrate intrusions greatly enhances the effectiveness of network defenses. Just as our air defenses are linked with those of our allies to provide warning of attack, so too must we share information to prevent and, if necessary, respond to cyber intrusions. In the past year, the Department of Defense has worked with some of our closest allies, including Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, United Kingdom and the countries of NATO, to strengthen our cyber partnerships. While our efforts are increasingly linked with many international partners, far greater levels of cooperation with more nations are needed if we are to stay ahead of the cyber threat. The strategy the President is releasing today provides a framework for how we can expand this cooperation and establishes how network security relates to other critical areas of partnership. Ultimately, this strategy will help us build a coalition of nations whose mutual interest in securing cyberspace will ensure the benefits we derive from it flow uninterrupted. I am delighted to carry forward our cooperation in the cyber realm and look forward to working closely in this effort with the Departments of State, Justice, Commerce, and Homeland Security under the leadership of President Obama. It's now my pleasure to introduce the White House Cybersecurity Coordinator, Howard Schmidt. Thank you very much, Deputy Secretary Lynn, and all the distinguished colleagues that are here. And it's particularly nice to see you in an environment outside of the Situation Room for a change, so it's great to be here. Uh, the very fact that everyone is here on this stage at this time really speaks to the importance of this issue to our government, to our nation, and to the international community. I've long said that for the Internet to continue to thrive, we have to recognize that our work is a team sport. If you want to more evidence of how committed we are to this, just take a look at the stage and see the leadership across the government that supports this. In the last half hour, you've heard from Departments of State, Justice, Commerce, Homeland Security, Defense, and the White House, all speaking on a strategy that brings all together all of our international work regarding cyberspace. But just look around you in the audience. In this audience, we have top leaders from foreign governments, from our own departments and agencies, and especially the dedicated men and women across the colleagues that we have in the National Security Staff, the Executive Office of the President. We also have an in industry, civil society, as well as academia. We fully recognize it will take all of us to realize a future of cyberspace that is open, inoperable, secure, and reliable. As Secretary Clinton mentioned, this project was the collaboration of more than 18 different departments and agencies and countless consultations with partners at home and abroad. Our thinking of the way forward and how we are organized has been developed as we've been working on this strategy. We've implemented a lot of changes through this, starting with the President's decision how to organize the White House to create the Cybersecurity Office, which is dual-hatted dual between the National Security Staff and the National Economic Council. But there are some things that have and will always remain the same. Our abiding commitment to serve the President's vision for prosperity, security, and openness in our interconnected world. Our entire government's deep-seated commitment to fundamental freedoms of expression and association, to privacy, and to the free flow of information. And of course, our commitment to ensure our national cybersecurity core activities are coordinated, true to our principles and serving the American people. Now, some people may ask, is this a new strategy? And yes, but it's not as often, not the same type we often think about. We begin this strategy by recognizing the long-term cybersecurity in cyberspace depends on international cooperation. It depends on states recognizing all the good that can be come from these systems and building the prosperity that Secretary Locke so eloquently pointed to. It depends on building a, a, a series of states and communities that can see the intrinsic benefits of cyberspace where trust and progress went out over fear and control. It depends on us doing our own work here at home, as Attorney General Holder and Secretary Napolitano made clear, to reduce the vulnerabilities and to build on the rule of law 
and helping one another as we do so. As Deputy Secretary Lynn mentioned, it depends on us joining together as we collect, we work together in a collective security framework to confront not only new, but existing threats that exist. But to be clear, this is just the beginning of a conversation within governments, between governments, with the private sector, and beyond. For us on this stage, the strategy will be a guiding document for our departments and agencies to better define and coordinate their role in international cyberspace policy, to execute a specific way forward, and the plan for future implementation. But it is also a call to private sector, civil society, and end users to re reinforce these efforts through the partnerships, awareness, and specific actions. But most importantly, it's an invitation for other states and peoples to join us. We look forward to continuing this conversation with you, both here and abroad, online and offline. And I hope you all have a chance to review the strategy in depth and meet with us in the coming weeks and months to further discuss it. But we also look forward to your engagement on some of the other cru crucial pieces of the administration-wide cybersecurity efforts you've been hearing about lately. Last month, we lost our National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, or the NSTIC. And thanks again to Secretary Locke for his leadership, as NIST has been a great partner in this effort moving forward. And just last week, as John had mentioned, we released the administration's legislative proposal designed to dramatically improve our domestic cybersecurity and enhance civil liberties and privacy protections. One more thing that's part of a broader administration dialogue. Together under President Obama's leadership, we've accomplished three milestones in our efforts to get the most from cyberspace nationally and extend its benefits globally. But this is just the beginning. We look forward to highlighting even more initiatives as we move forward, like the ongoing National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, or NICE as we know it, as we'll be talking more about that in the near future. But I've gone on long enough now, and it's time for all of you to get your opportunity to review this document for yourselves. For all of you joining us here today, we're happy to provide you with a copy of the International Strategy on your way out. And for those of you watching online, you can find it at whitehouse.gov, where in the next few minutes, our blog will go live with a link to the full document. I began on the topic of teamwork, and I want to conclude on it. And for that, I want to acknowledge my team who kept it on track, including what I refer to oftentimes as my cyber uh, the chief cyber diplomat within the NSS, David Edelman, who with our team and working across the, the White House and the Department of Agencies, helped put this together, not only government speed, but internet speed. So thank you, David. And say, thank you, Secretary Clinton, for loaning him to us to help make this work. So please join me in thanking everyone who was a part of this, our distinguished speakers today, and Mr. Brennan for hosting us all, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.